Hi, I'm Scott Helmers, and I'm here with fellow Vizio MVP Chris Roth, who's going to talk to us about shape data, that, that all-important data behind the shapes in a Vizio drawing. What I'm going to do, Scott, is first of all show you the kinds of data you can store behind a shape. Okay. And then we'll go and show you how to actually add fields to shape. So what I've got here is my, my favorite ThinkPad network shape. It's modeled after standard Visio network shapes. Okay. But I've got a special set of data in here that shows each type of shape data that you can give to a shape. So the first one is textual data, so the location. So we can say my office and just type in any string we want. Okay. The next set, uh, data field is memory, and that's numeric. And that, I noticed that it said 8 gigabytes. Okay. Visio is really expecting only a number. Now, we'll test that by typing in something like Bob, and Visio will say, uh, no, thank you. You need to add <laughs> Must a, be a number. number. Right. So we'll type in 16 because I just upgraded. And you'll see that the GB is being put in there due to some formatting se settings. But if I actually try to type in the GB, it'll get an error as well. So okay. that's just something to be aware so of. So the units are attached automatically because of the formatting on that field. E exactly, exactly. Okay. The next type of data is a fixed list or a, a drop-down list. And this is really nice. We can say I've got a T series. It's fairly new. Mm -hmm. And the model is similar to the fixed list, except that if you don't find your model, you can add one. So this is just to help most users out and picking something from a list, but we'll invent something new like, uh, well, this, we'll invent a T411. It never existed and probably never will, <laughs> okay. but now you can see that it's been added to the bottom of the list. Great, so I can customize the list as a user. I don't have to design anything with shape data. Yeah, leave the user that option. Okay. Purchase date is a date type field, and this has a wonderful calendar picker, so we'll just move it back because maybe I didn't get it. Got it in spring. Didn't get it for Christmas. Boo-hoo. Okay. So we'll set that. And you can also type directly in the dates if you uh, would rather do that. Okay. So we don't really have to do that. So those are the data types that you can enter. And you can see it's fairly easy to use the shape data window. Right. So, so that's great. Now we know that there are fields and all those different types that we can use. We're not just stuck with text and numbers. Uh, what if I want to create shape data fields? What if my shape doesn't have any data on it? Super question. It takes us right to our next next page, and you'll see we've got we've got uh, some imported images here. These I, just I recognize a couple. You of recognize those. these? These just happen to be the covers of books from each of the guys doing the video narration and hosting in this series. Now you'll notice that as I selected these shapes, none of them have yeah, nothing appears shape in the shape data, data window. So okay. let's put some shape data on it. I'll zoom about. So zoom out just a little bit and I'll select some, some books because you can actually define the shape data fields for multiple shapes. It actually saves you some time. At the time. same time. Okay. So you can right click on the shape or right click in the shape data window and look for the define shape data item and we'll add two fields to these. So one first one we'll do, we'll just do price and uh, we'll set the data type to be a currency, not a number, so we get some dollar formatting okay. and we'll yeah. just double check the formatting. It's in dollars, and we'll take the two decimal places. Now, we can do multiple fields in this dialog. We don't have to leave the f uh, dialog. And you can see prices down here, and there's a bit of a summary of what we've just set. OK, great. And all we have to do is click New to get another one. And you can see it's added there with the default settings. Okay. We'll go change it a little bit. So let's do a, let's do a star rating. OK. Let's have some fun here. And what we're going to do is a fixed list, because these are a little bit tricky and less than obvious if you don't know how to enter the items in that list. Okay. So we saw that earlier there were some drop-down choices. Right. The way to do that is to go to the format cell uh, in this form, not the value cell, and separate items with a semicolon. So we'll start with one star and a semicolon. We'll put two stars and a semicolon. Okay, I get the so idea. And so on. So the semicolon is the important thing. That's the delimiter between exactly. each entry in the list. And we don't need one after the end because it's really only between items. Okay. So we'll hit OK. So there we go. We've got two books, both with the price and ratings fields. Okay, so let's great. have some fun. So this is Scott's book. And the last time I checked, retail was $755, which is a bit a steep. Little steep. And uh, I think it's getting a two-star rating. I, I don't know about that, but uh, OK, we'll, we'll go with it for the moment. And my book is a reasonable $12.99. $12 <laughs> uh, you can actually use the arrow keys to use the, to change the drop-down list. So we'll just and keep pushing until it doesn't go Very conveniently go to the bottom of the list and get five stars. Okay. okay. All right, so that's not fair, people. Let's give Scott something. Well, actually, we'll just 
set them both at the same time. So I'll hold down shift and click on my book and Scott's book, and they're both around $15. Great. I so think. not only can you create data fields for more than one shape at a time, but you can edit or change the values of data fields for more than eye. one shape at a time. Very good, yes. Great. Now, I think we missed something, though, because I oh, think my, my... David's book has no data. My drag select was a little bit short of David's book, and that's just not fair because he deserves some rating as well. Can I copy the data from one shape into another shape? Yes, you can. Now, you th you'd think something like Format Painter would do it, but it's not, it's not that simple, but it's that easy. Okay. So, good. we'll just click on my book and suck the data fields out of it and send them over to Dave's. And the way you do okay. that is to right click in the Shape Data window and look for the third item that we haven't visited yet, Shape Data Sets. And up comes this funny little window here oh, that stores related fields as a family of data fields, so okay. to say. So there's a sample in there already, but we'll add a new one. And you'll be amazed at the defaults. It says, create a new set from the shape selected in Visio. Well, well that's perfect. That sounds perfect. What should we call it? What do you think, book? That book sounds book. good. So we'll hit OK. And it sucked the price and rating fields out and put them under the moniker book. OK. So now we just have to go over to Mr. David Parker's book, select it, check book, and hit apply. And there we go. And now his book, his book has is, data as well. Yeah. So now he, t he has a, his book is a little bit more technical, so I think he gets more like 25 bucks for that. So we'll do that, but we'll leave him a five star. What okay, excellent. That sounds like a good plan. So there you have it, using shape data fields. What else did we do? Great. We, we use shape data fields. We created our own, too. So thank you very much, Chris. That's a great overview for people who want to add data to shapes and use the data in their shapes in various ways. Thank you.